Okay, so let's set up this model uh, that is showing you how to do uh, fluid structure interaction. And this is the model here. Uh, the flow comes through this uh, tube and deforms this piece right here. So um, we've seen how this model works already. This is the second of two videos. And so I've got a model that's fluid structure interaction you set up. And so open that up. And it's the model that we saw previously, but I've taken out the physics. So we'll use this, um, this geometry and the variables. Uh, but I just want to show you how to set up the physics. So the, the physics that we'll, that we'll include here is uh, called fluid structure interaction and it'll be transient. One thing I should point out here is that the this is a two-way coupled problem because the deformation affects the flow and the flow affects the deformation. If it's only one-way coupled where the flow affects the deformation but it doesn't really uh, but the deformation doesn't affect the flow back, then uh, you can use this physics interface. And it's a simpler problem to solve. So if it is just one way coupled, then that's a better way to go. But this is two way, so we'll use uh, the time dependent um, solver interface. And here we go. We've got a lot of defaults, um, the fluid properties. Let's just go ahead and not use these materials here. And so we'll just set this up for water, which with a thousand kilograms per cubic meter and the um, viscosity is 0 0.001. And free deformation, this is a default wall. What I'm going to do actually is go down here to the elastic material and define that, select it, and I'll define that and use 1e e to the fifth, 0.33, and I think I had 3,000. OK, so now that I've defined that as the elastic material, when I go here to uh, well, now let's go back up here and go through the, the defaults. So the wall is uh, these boundaries, and that's fine for now. Prescribe mesh displacement, zero around all these boundaries. OK. Free, yeah, that's OK. We'll take care of that boundary here in just a second. And the fluid solid interface boundary, this is now the correct boundary, and it, it, it is because I defined this elastic material. And the default is that it wraps this interface boundary around that elastic material. And then we have some uh, initial values that we'll use just as the default settings. OK, so we have to have fluid coming in, fluid coming out, and we have to have a mechanical boundary. So. We can do all of those, I think. We've got an inlet boundary, and we've got a outlet boundary. And solid mechanics will be a fixed constraint boundary. So the inlet, uh, I'm just going to use that expression that we had earlier, inflow. And outlet is. Uh, zero pressure and fixed constraint is right at the base of this moving piece and the mesh is the same okay so we should be ready to run this and one thing that we want to check when we when we took out the um, when I, when I took out this uh, physics interface, then one thing that can happen is this thing can 
uh, get a get an X right here. So we need to go and check this so that uh, we run that interface when we run this study. The other thing that we want to do is check this. This should say flow in rather than in flow to be consistent with our definition up here. So with those in place, we should be able to run this. And um, I've got it set up to display the results. So when this first gets going, the uh, convergence plot shows some real high values. So it's having difficulty getting going. But you see this coming down. So that's, that's good. That's encouraging. It's starting to figure out how to do this uh, solution. And so now we're starting to get some results here. And you can see that we're starting to have some deformation. And that's getting close to the maximum flow. That's about as far as, you, as I've been able to get this thing to bend over. Um, it's, we can't see the mesh, but it would be interesting to take a look at the mesh because I would expect that when it's at about that 0.2 second time that that mesh is really pretty deformed. We'll take a look at that here in just a second. Okay, so there's the setup of the physics and we run it and, and it's, uh, it's working again. Let's take a look and see what that mesh is doing. So we go here to surface and if we plot it as a wireframe, well, that's the that's the piece itself and we'll do this one we'll do the fluid flow so there's the there's the mesh and let's go here to the time and the maximum deformation is at about 0.2 seconds Okay, so there's the mesh, the deformed mesh, and you can see where uh, we're really starting to get some problems here with the mesh, really getting stretched out. Um, and so there'll be some errors as a result of this, um, but the errors are, are not great enough to cause the run to stop. Um, but I think if we if we try some um, basically what you can do to get the deformation to increase is to reduce the modulus. So right there. So one of the things you could do is to try experimenting around with the modulus and see if you can um, see if you can reduce it and uh, get the deformation to be too great. Um, one thing that's done, the procedure, if you, if you wanted to run this and ha really have a large deformation, then the procedure is to run it out to a point when the deformation is, um, is large, but the, the model still is running, and stop it, and then you can uh, remake the mesh, and remesh the problem and continue to run it. Um, and that'll allow you to extend the uh, the, the analysis to even larger deformation.